And on that subject of inclusion, um, I wanted to bring up the issue of workplace harassment. Um, as some of the nerdy folks on the Lack community know, uh, the video game company Activision Blizzard, the ones who made Call of Duty, Warcraft, Overwatch, um, they were sued over rampant sexual harassment and employee discrimination. Uh, and the allegations in the lawsuit talk about the way that Activision Blizzard created a frat boy culture. Even though I haven't worked for Activision Blizzard myself, I have worked for a big tech company with a very similar frat boy culture. Um, so when you see companies with these types of cultural problems, um, how, the, how, how do you sort of identify the source of this problem? And how do you even begin to solve these toxic behaviors within the work culture? Like, do you just go in and fire the, the problematic employees? Do we reform and coach toxic managers? Like, what do we do? Well, I think focusing on individuals is not the way to go uh, for your first step. It's to look at the system. Mm. I think that's, you know, when you're doing this work, it's, it's always, you know, the question you ask is what is the, what is the culture of this business or this organization? Uh, and a lot of times I'll define culture is what's happening when the boss is not around. Ah, right. Like so, you know, you have to see what, what policies are in place. What is it, uh, you know, what are the, the company values? Are they just put out there for, you know, performative, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, approaches, or is it something that's genuine? And and what are those policies that are in place to deal with this? What is it? It starts with hiring. Well, it starts with, um, you know, recruitment. What is the recruitment process? What are you looking for? Are mm -hmm. these based on uh, dominating culture uh, definitions of what an effective leader are? You know? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, that, you know, we need someone who's, uh, you know, take charge kind of person, you know, someone who's uh, bold, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, and you're like, well, uh, OK, so if uh, if you look at a, a, a situation where you're in a, in a conference room in a meeting and we can pretend there's no plague going on and we're all you know <laughs> sitting around this uh, conference room table and uh, there is a white man in the meeting who's bold and has this, you know, take charge attitude. Mm hmm. Uh, he might be described one way. If you have a woman uh, who, uh, you know, exhibits those same uh, behaviors, she might be described another way. Mm -hmm. If a black man uh, exhibits those same behaviors in the in the meeting, he'll be described a different way. Mm -hmm. So are you are you really, you know, approaching your uh, your policies in your company with uh, a cultural consciousness? You know, we hear the term a lot, cultural competency. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know if that's possible. That's that's kind of a tough charge, you know, to be culturally competent. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not competent in my own cultures. You know, I'm, I'm uh, a half Japanese guy who grew up in Indiana. And so in Indiana, I was really Japanese. You know, my school lunches scared the other kids and all that. Uh, but when I went to Japan, man, I was really Indiana. Right. <laughs> so. It, it just uh, so competency. I don't know. But consciousness, always asking the questions uh, to yourself, not putting the burden on other people to explain it for you, but doing your homework, asking those questions, being aware that not everybody gets to navigate this world in the same way. So going back to the policies, what are the policies in place? I think that's the key. Uh, if you're hiring, uh, if you're if you're. Uh, you know, basing your criteria on hiring people on a bro culture, if you are fostering that bro culture, you're going to you're going to get more bros. Again, systems, they perpetuate themselves. So, um, you know, a lot of times companies will say, hey, you know, we want to bring you in to do a training. And I said, OK, well, before we do the training, let's talk about what outcomes you're looking for here. Mm -hmm. Equity is all about outcomes. Equity doesn't care about your intent. I think that's another tough thing that people or uh, grapple with it doesn't seem fair right well i didn't mean to shoot you in the face well <laughs> you did and so the outcome is i got to go to the hospital i don't know why i'm using dick cheney references now. <laughs> they're, they're pretty dated uh but I, I think that so they forget that it's it's about the outcomes and so if we are um really trying to change the culture 
um, whether it's a genuine thing or, you know, there's also the, the pragmatic thing of, of keeping yourself out of legal trouble as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that certainly is a, a motivator for a lot of companies and you can, but doing it for the, the right reasons, um, you know, it's got to be a part of it too, because it, you have to respect people. People see right through this stuff. Mm-hmm. And when you get these mission and vision statements that are just all these platitudes that just, oh, whatever, <laughs> you know. If you're going to put those out there, how are you practicing those? Can people in your company recite them? Do they know them? And not, not necessarily word for word, but do they know what the true meaning of these, these uh, you know, values are for your company? So, again, I really think it goes back to the system. What, what do you have in place? Um for recruitment, for uh, training, for uh, retention. What are you doing to make sure that you don't have this culture? Um, and it's it's a tough charge. And if you're lazy about it, you're not going to get great results. Mm-hmm. Time and time again, we see companies, well, all our engineering staff is white and they're male because... Um, you know, folks of color aren't interested in doing this kind of work. Now, it's hard to hear that. There's a little sliver of truth to that because a lot of folks tend to, um, you know, with with all the stuff that we're inundated with in media and family and school and church and all this that maybe tells us that we're not, um, that those jobs aren't for us. Mm-hmm. Or maybe we don't even know those jobs exist, mm-hmm. you know? How many young, uh, you know, kids of color uh, realize that you can have an amazing career designing athletic footwear? You may not, like you, know, you may not even think about things because you think about um, the the jobs and the the type of stuff that your you know family members or people close to you you know what they did, mm-hmm. right? I come from an army family. I'm an army brat. So what did I do? I joined the army. Um. Cause that's what I knew. And I was, I knew that I could get money for college if I did that. So, um, yeah. So again, it goes back to a systemic problem that we have, uh, in our culture, in our country. Um, if we're going to try to recruit people, well, it has to start with, are you working with youth, uh, to get them, uh, interested in what you're doing? Are you really doing some genuine outreach, um, and involvement with community? Are you seeking out uh, cultural and community groups to see, uh, you know, maybe having a job fair or something like that to to really, you know, find those people? Because there are a lot of folks of color, obviously, that can do these jobs. Uh, but if they don't know about them, if you're just telling your professional networks to spread the word, it may not get to uh, a lot of us. So there's uh, laziness is not going to get you some great results in that uh, in that respect. Yeah, and I, I, I'm, I really appreciate that you sort of talk about that way that, you know, it's work. You know, you, you can't go into this thinking that, ah, I'm going to hire, hire an Asian dude and he's going to, like, magically <laughs> spice things up and, and make everyone woke through, I don't know, cultural osmosis or some shit. 